Hey everyone and welcome to another painting video. In today's video I show you the process of my newest watercolor, color pencils and gouache painting. This painting will be available on the April auction at the Bad Apple Artist Collective Facebook page. More info and the exact dates are in the video description. And as always, all the materials that I used to create this painting are in the video description as well. The creation process was very exciting for me because I could try out a new drawing tablet for my digital mock-up process. Parblo asked me if I wanted to try out their graphic tablet and since my old one is falling apart, I was very happy to try out a new one. Although I don't use the tablet that often, but if I do mockups on Photoshop, I really need one. So this is definitely something that I need for my painting process. Some paintings that might be very simple, I might not need a drawing tablet, but for every painting that has tons of details, that has a very complex composition, or also my manga inspired artworks, especially those where I put like a lot of time in, I I need a drawing tablet for this process. So I was super excited to try that out. And the tablet is called A610 Plus. It came in this beautiful box that was so cute. The tablet has a couple of buttons on the left side. You also get a pen holder and a glove for your hand. The installation of the tablet was pretty simple, although there were a couple of hiccups. So when I go on the link that is written on the little flyer, that doesn't work. You have to go on their website and then click manually on the support link. There you can download the drivers, so that worked. Then, however, I couldn't open the Parblo drawing tablet program for some reason, so I had to open it as a administrator. This is just when you right click on the desktop icon and then you can choose open it as a administrator and then it works. Then you'll get a little program where you can adjust the settings of the graphic tablet and you can also assign short keys to the buttons on the tablet. But of course I couldn't memorize them and I forgot all the time which key was on what button. So I came up with this solution where I just added a couple of sticky notes on the tablet with the buttons and that worked out great. And yeah, so I was super excited to start the tablet and I started my mock-up. So I scanned the mock-up and open it into Photoshop and then I just played around with the pencil. I was very happy with how the pencil felt. It was definitely better than my old bamboo kids drawing tablet that I used all the years for all my paintings. So coloring my mock-up was no problem. That worked perfectly well. The only thing that bothered me a little bit, but I'm not sure if it is due to the drivers of the graphic tablet or if this is a Photoshop thing. So whenever I wanted to change the settings of my brush that it doesn't use the transfer function, this is a function in Photoshop where the brush always fades when you draw. And if you use a mouse for example, then it doesn't fade. So it basically uses the pen pressure to generate a natural looking brush stroke. However, when I want to erase something, I don't really need that. And I wanted to turn off that transfer function in Photoshop, it just turned on immediately when I used the pen again. So I'm not sure if it's on the graphic tablet or if it is because of Photoshop. That was a little bit annoying, but then I just increased the pen pressure a little bit with the Parblo drawing program and then I could erase better and then I just filled out my entire painting and this worked really well. And I also added some Art Deco inspired ornaments. I just wanted to try out how well I can draw with the pen and it really worked well. So if you are a digital artist, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I think this graphic tablet, it's probably good. So it's around $70. 
so it's relatively cheap but I don't have a lot of experience with drawing tablets in general. I don't use them very often so this is just a little introduction of this product for everyone who is interested. I was just very happy that I could receive it and I will use it for all my future artworks that require a Photoshop mockup. I also had a look at their website and I found a much smaller drawing tablet as well. This one is only 6 inches large and for me I think that would be even better because I don't really need such a large one, I just need it for coloring my sketches. So if you are interested you might want to check that one out too. Also the Parblo graphic tablet came with this super handy glove to protect your hand. I didn't know that I would actually use it but after I had colored my painting for like 10 minutes I really needed the glove to continue working. This was super helpful. However I managed to lose this glove like on the day I opened the graphic tablet. I'm not sure how this is even possible but I have a talent for that so <laughs> It's really annoying. I lose so many things. I don't know how this always happens, but it's super annoying. Is there anyone of you who have the same problem of losing things all the time? You put them somewhere and you know that you have put them there and in the next moment it's gone and it might never show up again or sometimes maybe like a month later. I hope this glove will appear magically, but I think it's just trapped in another dimension. I don't know what happened to it. I really have a talent for that. After I had finished the digital mock-up I printed it onto an A3 sized printer paper and transferred it onto watercolor paper. I used Arches cold press 300 grams watercolor paper and because I had changed and colored my sketch so much that I didn't have any outlines anymore I tried to transfer it onto the watercolor paper directly by adding a layer of pastels on the back of my print and then just transferring it through the print onto the paper. That worked but I used blue pastel and I was afraid that those tiny blue lines would instantly disappear when I would rub my hand over it so I drew the whole drawing with color pencils and outlined everything so that I had a robust underdrawing before I started my painting and that took me a whole day so <laughs> that was very exhausting and I hope to not do that again next time. I will maybe just use my light box again or maybe graphite transferring paper I'm not sure but this method was really very time consuming. Anyways I began with filling in the face with a skin tone mixed with cadmium red light, yellow ochre and rose. So for this painting I wasn't sure if I would use my Schmincke watercolors or my Arteza watercolors. I ended up with the Schmincke watercolors because I tested it on the surface and the Arteza watercolors are compared to Schmincke watercolors or other watercolors that are higher in quality, they are more chalky. So whenever you add a layer of them on your watercolor paper it won't be that vibrant like Schmincke for example. Some of the paints are less chalky than others. Um, for the skin tones I used the Schmincke ones because they were more vibrant and more intense and I didn't want to take any risk for this painting so I used the Schmincke watercolors but I have a plan to combine my Arteza watercolors and my Schmincke watercolors in one big giant palette. So I'm just waiting for my empty giant palette that I I ordered and I hope I will show you that project in an upcoming video soon. But back to the painting. So I filled in the face and I had a reference photo for the shadows and the lights so that I knew where I would add highlights and midtones and all of that. However I wasn't really happy with how the face turned out because it looked too simple to me. I wanted to have a golden middle way between a manga inspired painting and a realistic face. And at the beginning it just looked too simple and too manga like. So before I continued working on the face I first filled out the hair portion with a light rose tone because I really like pink hair and then I continued working on the face again. And in order to get more 
tiny blendings and more details in shades and gradients in the face, I decided to switch over to color pencils. So the Arches cold pressed paper is not really perfect for working with color pencils, but I pressed so hard that I could get a decent layer of color pencils. Very helpful as always are my luminance color pencils from Caran d'Ache. I bought a couple of new shades of them recently, one of it being Burnt Ochre 10%, which is super for skin tones. So I used them alternately while working on the portrait portion. Technically, I was happy how the face turned out after my color pencil work on it, but somehow I disliked that the eyes were so round. I don't know, but I wanted to have a mixture between an Asian and maybe an European face, or just something that is just a mixture between everything. And so the very round eyes didn't really fit to my vision. Also, something that is really annoying is when I paint, in the middle of the painting, my mind just decided that it didn't like the original idea and it wanted to have something completely different. So a little bit of that happened with this painting and I was like, great, how can I change the eyes now? <laughs> and luckily I got the 60 gouache paints from Arteza and with those I could adjust the eye shape a little bit. So I just changed the roundness a bit and made them a little bit more oval and narrow and not that round. Now I definitely like it more. It's just a very subtle change. The Arteza gouache paints were perfect for that job. When you paint with gouache, you have to mix the paint very thoroughly. And the more pre-mixed colors you have, the easier the painting process will get. And having 60 colors is really amazing because I just have to mix two or three colors and then I already get the exact shade that I want. I also used these paints to work on the hair portion and a good way for painting hair strands is scooping up big amount of gouache paint and spreading it evenly on your brush so that there aren't any big lumps on your brush and then when your brush is full of paint you can just draw one perfect hair strand. You have to pay attention to the consistency of the paint, add a little bit of water but not too much so that you get the perfect hair strand. That's a matter of practice. The paint can get too dry or you can add too much water and when the gouache is dried you won't be able to see the paint because it's too transparent but if you have the perfect amount and consistency of paint on your brush you can make very beautiful hair strands. I used this technique to refine the hair and I'm super happy how the face and the hair area turned out in the end. Then I continued working on the beautiful blue bow on her hat and on the little roses that adorn this hat piece. I really enjoy such intricate fabrics and costumes and it's always so wonderful when I paint these because I imagine having these beautiful things myself and wearing those, but also just the fact painting them fills me with happiness. These kinds of paintings are the subjects that I was in love with when I was a teenager. So it takes me back and it makes me so happy to paint these beautiful Lolita inspired manga paintings with all those intricate fashion details like bows and roses and all the pastel tones. This just fills me with happiness. Anyways, back to the technical stuff again. <laughs> After having finished the head portion, I continued with her body and with the dress. Because I had already put so much time into the coloring of this composition, I didn't have to think when I was painting. And this is a huge help, because if you have such a detailed composition, finding the right colors for every part of it is almost impossible. I have tried it and I always fail. So I never do it directly on the spot. Instead, I really put a lot of time into the color finding process. And so I could concentrate on the shades and on the details of the dress. For her gown, I used a couple of reference photos from Gothic Lolita Fashion that I just incorporated into this composition. The whole process took really long. I would say about 11 hours. I only recorded seven of it 
which is already a lot. But if I painted a rose, for example, I didn't record painting all the other roses in the painting because the technique is the same. And speaking of roses, after having finished the dress, I continued with one of the roses in the composition. Almost all my flowers that I depict in my paintings are photos that I took myself or photos that someone sent to me. So they look all very natural and not as perfect as all the photos you would find on the internet. And having this huge database of different rose pictures just reinforces my fascination for roses. I don't know why, but I am for some reason not as interested in many other flowers, although they are so beautiful. But I think due to their shape and their romantic character, roses fit extremely well to romantic paintings in general. But maybe I just don't have the right photos of other flowers. I'm not sure, but somehow I always come back to roses. There's such a large variety of roses and they all look so different. So I'm never fed up with them, I guess. Then I continued with working on the butterflies. Here again I painted them with the help of a reference photo and I find it very useful to have it flipped or turned so that it matches your drawing because the butterfly wings are so difficult, especially those intricate patterns, that having a reference photo in the exact pose of the butterfly is, for me at least, necessary to get it right. I would say the centerpieces of the roses are the three blossoms in the right bottom corner of the painting. I put a lot of time into these. I think it was around two hours alone for painting these roses. They are my favorite part of this painting. Then I filled in the remaining butterflies with the same technique basically. So I start with the yellow base color of one butterfly and then I added the details. On this paper I find it very easy to color the various parts of the composition. It's not that difficult but it is a lot of work. Also with Arches paper it is not as easy to get clean lines as with the Fabriano hot pressed paper. However, you get wonderful blendings. And also on the Fabriano paper, I often achieve the look of having the different parts of the composition look different. So for example, the hair looks different than the skin, like in the way how it is painted. However, for this painting, I wished that everything looks the same. So it's really dependent on my idea, on my vision and on my composition, how the painting should look in the end. When I want something realistic, I might use a completely different medium. So this is why I use so many different materials all the time, because I want to get the perfect medium for my painting. And for this one, I really want everything to look very similar, very colorful and romantic. And it wasn't so important for me that the figure or individual parts of the painting pop up. Everything should look as if it is one big beautiful pattern. And I think with this paper and the technique I achieved this. I continued filling in the background and the individual details of the composition. For the fabric that you can see in the painting I used a couple of photo references. For example for the sleeve this very complicated pattern of folds in the fabric is just too difficult to make it up. So having reference photos is super important for me. I'm really happy how the Art Nouveau inspired ornamented frame around the composition complemented the whole painting. Firstly, I filled in this frame with a turquoise shade of green, but I had trouble keeping the shapes clean. So I refined it again with gouache paint and there's one shade, I think it's called pearl green or something like that. And it is a beautiful metallic paint and I just had to add a little bit of white to it and I already had the perfect color for the frame. And I just very carefully filled in the ornamented frame to really refine the contours. I also added a very small, tiny purple contour around the turquoise green of the frame because I really liked this additional like detail there. And then I was finally finished with this painting and it took me so long, but I'm really happy with how it looks. And 
The process was wonderful, I really enjoyed every hour of it and there's not one area in the painting that didn't receive all my love. There's only one thing missing in this painting and that's a title and maybe you can help me out here. Since I created this painting for the upcoming Bad Apple Artist Collective auction with the theme Seasons vs. Birdhouse, I decided to add a bird cage in the background. So my idea for the painting is to show a beautiful woman seemingly locked up in a golden cage, who appeals to the viewer with her pretty appearance and her vulnerability, but in reality this is just part of her mischievous spiel to seduce an unfortunate soul with whom she will do whatever she wishes. My idea for the title was something along the lines of let me be your little bird, but if you have a better idea let me know in the comment section below. And that's it for the painting process. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this video was a little bit longer than usual, but I had so much to say. Let me know in the comments if you prefer the shorter or the longer videos. Now, if you found this video helpful and you would like to see my painting process in real time, you might want to join me on Patreon at the five or ten dollars we bought here, especially if you're interested in how I do the manga inspired faces, backgrounds, clothes and so on. I recommend the ten dollars we bought here. I have just released two brand new non-narrated real-time painting videos, each over six hours long, that shows you the complete painting process from start to finish of these two artworks and many more. You also get a full material list, my reference pictures or sketches. And if you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real-time lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that, all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just $5 a month you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat, right? And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of unrated but even longer real-time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. And for the extra portion of art, you might even fancy the art surprise tier. For only $5 more, I sent you a beautiful set of three unique art gifts each month. I chose the best artworks and illustrations that I created and turn them into beautiful magnets, stickers and postcards, which are not only wonderful decorations for your home, but also are rare collectibles, because once I send them out, they won't be available anywhere else and I don't reprint them. So get your art surprises package this month. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash leobabrückner.